Right, you ready to start? Yeah. You ready to start? <laughs> 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 right, everybody, we are here, we are recording um, another episode of Talk of the Town podcast with this amazing man, Mr. Lewis McGee. Oh, it's me, yeah. Yeah, sorry. yeah that's you. Yeah, said no, amazing, you know, sorry. <laughs> Lewis is otherwise known as Spuddy from Damo and Ivor and my favourite character, Denzel Bishop from Fair City, because I'm an L one. Um, Lewis, how are you getting on, love? I'm all good in the hood, yeah. Good. Thanks for having me. No problem at all. I can't say thanks for having me back, but I haven't been on this one yet. You haven't been on this one yet. No, you did do a live with me six months ago, and it was brilliant. I watched it last night, and I was like, Jesus, Laurie, you talked over him the whole fucking time. (laughs) Which I did. (laughs) I was just happy. I was like, yeah, you just chat away. Yeah, I I did. I did. Um, Sorry, before we go on importance, no, Kira is not here, because obviously... She's a lot of personal stuff going on in her life, yeah. and she does want everybody to know that she would love to be here, but obviously she's to deal with what's going on at home, and we are all sending our best thoughts and wishes and all that to all of the Dignam family, um, especially Christy. Yeah. Lovely to have you, Lewis. I have not met you before at all, so I was saying to Lewis beforehand, I generally don't know some of the people that Laura brings on to the yeah. podcast, so <laughs> I am asking as if I'd be sitting in a pub just meeting someone for the first time. Um, so someone like me who hasn't really a clue, obviously I know Fair City and I know Damo and Ivor and I love both, well I, lo- I love Damo and Ivor, don't you? <laughs> Fair City, let's be honest. <laughs> it's, n- it's no love hate. I love Fair City. My dad loves Fair City. But what's happening now, we're, for people that don't know you, what's, where are we at? What's um, going on for you? What have I done now? Um, well all that, like Damo and Ivor ended five, six years ago now, nearly. Um, I left Fair City three years ago, okay. and Carla went back to Spain again. Um, must be having fun over there because it's been three years. Yeah, but um, any bit. <laughs> yeah. right. Um, I am generally more now. I work with young people. I'm a drama facilitator. I do uh, drama workshops with young people around around the country, mainly Dublin. Um, I do go up to Dundalk and work with a youth theatre called Mad Youth Theatre. We've been yeah. doing that since twenty seventeen. No, twenty eighteen. I'm oh, 27 yeah, 27 now. Um, that's like my second home up there. Very good. Working with the youth theatre up there, doing shows, the boys and shows with them guys, and working with our members. You have all, there's about, I say there's about 100 members at youth theatre, it's probably not, but close enough. Yeah. And have my own youth theatre, Sarge Youth Theatre, found that mm-hmm. out in 2018. Um, that's still going on. We survived the uh, when the world went on for over two years and we came back. So um, yeah, that's what I did. We work with young people. I, do drama workshops, do shows, and as well as that, I've been delving into working with youth groups. Okay. Working with um, some lads out in Cherry Orchard, helping them make a movie. Very good. Um, working with TY students in schools, and um, just this year as well, I was dipping into the Axis in Ballymun, and I was part of a program called Deadly Conversations, which is a grief cafe run with the Irish Hospice Foundation. That's, That's actually a very good name, isn't it? Yeah. It, yeah, it's, it's a great play on words, yeah, which is literally you sit in a cafe in the Axis and you talk about dying, death, loss and grief. Okay. If you want to. Is that still going on? Um, it's stopped now, it's like the, the programme has run its course. I'm not sure if they're going for a, like a season two, if you call okay. it that, like obviously you wouldn't yeah. call it that, but yeah. I think the idea is to ramp her up again maybe and get new people yeah. in. Yeah. But I do Pretty know much. the members who were there, the participants, sorry not members, you know join with membership yeah it's literally drop in drop out kind of thing and is that for young people or is it just that's anyone for everyone in general? Okay, anyone in general good. who's um, dealing with any yeah i would 100 percent jump into that yeah i think that's very time. important yeah that was really i important. think especially like we touch a lot on these type of areas in each podcast we do like as in geographically the type of areas that you know ballymon or whatever's in i did i think conversations that are so important because especially because of a, the way a lot of people are affected by death in these type of areas, you know, with drugs and suicides and stuff like yeah. that. Um, so, yeah, it's very important to go And also, I think, like, uh, well, from my experience anyway, I feel like, when I want to talk about my brother, like, about mm. Amy, I do feel sometimes, like, you're not going to be saying it to your friends because you've already had yeah, that conversation yeah. and you nearly feel like you're you're going on and on and on yeah. about it but so that is a good outlet for people it gives you that space yeah that safe space to talk it's yeah, good, it's yeah like again there's all like this whole spectrum of ways you can yeah. talk about it. like someone like yourself you want to talk to somebody you want to talk to somebody new yeah because yeah. yourself just 
might say more to a stranger and might even help you. But I know you, you've no you've no filter, you don't no, care yeah. in your pocket, no, so like that I'm doesn't no But someone else might be going like my friends have heard all this, but maybe there's one thing I don't want my friends to hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me tell someone else. Or yeah. you might say, maybe I don't want to tell my friends this again because I know they're my friends and, we, and yeah. they love me. Yeah. But maybe they just could be sick of Yeah. And yeah. It's, that's yeah. just a, that's a and they're all just normal. That's a human thing, thing as well, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Because it's a lot. And yeah. It's one of those things like dying, that loss and grief is yeah. as normal as waking up and going to sleep and yeah. being born. It's just it's a part of your process in life. Yeah. And we have this strange. King. We always say the Irish are great at funerals and stuff like that, but I think we're great at the funeral yeah, part. Yeah, not the yeah. after bit of it, yeah. It's the yeah. have a shindig and have a song yeah. and have the 44,000 yeah. uh, rounds of points and all that. And after it's like, shit, now what? Yeah, now we just move on. talking about it. Yeah. 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 Not yeah. being afraid to go, yeah. hey, I don't know what I'm feeling yeah. right now. But yeah. even sometimes I look at, say, in England, like how long it takes for the funeral process and all. Everything is so quick here in Ireland. Everything's like... Within three days, there's a funeral, there's a shindig, then you move on and people are back to work after a week. And yeah. it's like, it's not really a long time to process the debt of somebody, no. especially somebody important in your life. Mm -hmm. You know, like, it really isn't at mm -hmm. all. Yeah. Do you know? But with regards to the young people, like, what made you get involved in that end of things? Um, I was part of youth theatre in the Reco when I was 14. We joined, uh, it was down, then known at Roundabout Youth Theatre. Um, I just needed an outlet. Yeah. All my friends could play guitar. They were in samba bands. They were in the parade on Paddy's Day. Yeah. I couldn't hold a guitar to save my life. I did try. Um, <laughs> couldn't do it. And I just needed something to do. I was feeling really left out and right now, just shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I was right. You were um, a self confessed, long haired emo. Yeah, I had yeah, my, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, great. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but no, Still yeah, I had, this, like, had this big, uh, I had this big mad, like, it looked like the fifth Beatle kind of thing that just didn't make it into the band. Uh, like <laughs> the baggy clothes and the big black the heavy jumpers, obviously covered in flames. Yeah, yeah. Flames oh, of back course. Then. yeah. Chains hanging out of my jeans. But yeah, I just I needed an outlet. Yeah. And um, I was recommended to me to go over there. And I went in, and before staying all, I was like, oh wow. Yeah. I hate this. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. 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 Um, I had to, no, I have a bad cough, so I haven't had to turn away and cough just so I'm not spiking people listening to headphones. That's okay. They're like, what the? What's that? <laughs> I'm, like, oh, sorry. <coughs> I'm not contagious. But yeah, I hate it. And I left halfway through the first uh, workshop. And then I told my mates, here, please come join us with me. Yeah. Um, I want to do this. And he did, fair play to them. Um, one of them stuck with it for a couple of weeks and he left. Yeah. Um, the other fella stuck with it to the end and. Yeah, he, he's in fair seat now, and he's he's an actor now because of it. Yeah, and uh, so we both went on that journey together. Um, and he's the mechanic guy, isn't he? Um, yeah, Wes. His name is Wes. Plays Wes. Doug. Doug, yeah, Dougie. Yeah, so it's not <laughs> yeah. just fair seat. He does other bits and bobs as yeah. well, obviously. Um, and he was actually your best man at your wedding as well. Wasn't he wasn't there, Jay. Best friend. Best friend. Oh, yeah. Um, that, that, just like best friend, yeah, like I'm 22, but like best friend, but like I'm not, I'm not 17, but yeah, he is. It doesn't matter, it's okay to say, it's okay. One of those things, I catch yourself going, do you have best friends? You just have mates, and then you have like no, really good no, mates, and then you, have, you have that one mate who, like, yeah. Who yeah. you can give a, all your bullshit yeah. to, yeah. and they don't judge you. <laughs> ah, but no, yeah, that like, yeah, that's, that's the perfect term, best mate. Yeah. yeah. yeah best man, best mate. Yeah, love the bits. Very good. And uh, yeah, so join that, and then as I got older, um, you can't do youth theatre as you get older. Yeah. Um, but I kind of fell from youth theatre and went. I still went into RTE. I was doing a lot of, a lot of fair city. And then when fair city ended, I got a call off the guys from down on over, and I went into that. And then that ended, for a while. And I was kind of stuck in this little thing of I don't know what to do yeah. myself. Yeah. And um, there was always this thing of training, and um, for to do your own youth theatre. Yeah. Like, well, I can't join youth theatre anymore, but maybe I can go and be the people that inspired me to do. The yeah, career exactly. I went on um, was these people are lovely people I'm still in touch with and some of them are good friends of mine like and they still go off and do the stuff so I looked into it and I joined that and that was a year long process of early starts four days a week of just going to the lab on Fowley Street in Dublin and playing it was so weird like I was getting paid you could get paid it's a scheme like it's a yeah. proper qualification like level six and I got paid to go play yeah, and like doing all, what you love. Yeah, and the people like your aunt's coming in, like the assessor has to come in and check up that the course is going well, and that they're yeah. they're putting money into it and all that. I was like, this is one of the hardest things to do. So he's like, I was like, is it? Yeah. Like, but like, I'm object. not being big headed. Like, yeah. like I enjoy this. Yeah. There's obviously hard parts, but like you're getting loads of essays to write and 
work stuff and all, you get the hand aim and all by the end of each week, like proper like college course kind of thing like. But uh, yeah, I loved it. And from there on out, I just went out and I just yeah. started integrating myself into the world of youth theatre and yeah. youth drama and it's one of those small worlds, once you're a facilitator, everybody knows everybody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyone yeah, needs, like, just people who ring me going, hey, what's up, oh, I need someone to cover, can okay. you do this, and, like, let you know if I can. Yeah, yeah. very and, good. And, like, again, if I need cover, just people who I can ring, I'm like, hey, sorry to ask, but uh, are you around this area on this day? Yeah. And, of course, they have the whole shebang of stuff as well. But it's really nice. Tweet kind of like what I did to you two weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How are you fixed for one day a week? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what's the future now? Do you, do you, are you going to be in Kin? Let's say, are we? We going to see you on screen? Is that kind of thing? Soon? Is that kind of thing? Like, love Kin now. I have to I say, did, like, love Kin. Not seeing you. Ah, I'm seeing you out It's brilliant. Is it? And the other day, Laurie rang me and she's like, "We're just going to start season two because season one's not on." And I like nearly freaked out on the phone. I was like, "Don't start season two without seeing season one." It's brilliant. <laughs> You're going to need it that end, If yeah. you enjoyed Love Hate you will really enjoy it. Yeah. It's very, very good. But I thought it was so disappointing when Damo and Ivor wasn't, was done. Yeah. Because yeah. it was so popular. Like, it was like, yeah. there is such that North and South Side thing. And yeah. It was very, I thought that was brilliant. At the end as well, like, we yeah. started, like, when I done that Damo and everything, we started doing the, the series, we were all, like, in our 20s. Yeah. We finished nearly, you know, yeah. like, some of us were in our 30s, some of us were in our, some of them were, like, going into our 30s, some of us were going into our 40s, and we're like, yeah. Can we keep doing this? I just thought it was very yeah, good. Like, I just, thought it was very good. There's not an awful lot of grey Irish. It was 2015, wasn't it? 2007. I remember 2017 when we finished the movie. Yeah. yeah. There was a huge gap between like 2011. No, 2012 was season one. 2013 was season two. There was this four year gap. Yeah. And then the movie just popped out of nowhere. Yeah. And like, it was fun to do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's kind of the kind of thing. Can we keep doing yeah. this? Like, I know it's, not, it's kind of like bizarre like, to make the... Comparison, well, not comparison to two shows, Compar comparing the two shows, but um, years ago there was um, Rick Mail and Ed Emerson had a show called Bottom. Oh, yes. yeah, yeah. And they said, look, we can't keep doing yeah, this. Like, at some point if we keep to... going, it's going to be Bottom yeah. the and Home. And you might think that sounds great. Yeah. yeah. But to us, yeah. um, Richie and Eddie battering each other in like grown up like diapers yeah. and in the yeah. nursery. Like, we don't want to do that. Like, yeah. So at some point, can Spuddy and Damo keep. Yeah. Like doing that kind of like acting. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's like about seventeen kids between all the families together as well, so yeah. it just doesn't make sense. All I can think of when they think of Damon and I were is the the big caps on yeah, the shell yeah. suits, so that's brilliant. I and you were that. saying on the last one there, all the, the those shell suits and hats were all given away, weren't they? they were no, they were all oh, given really? away. Yeah. As as now they all got donated, yeah. Ah. Yeah. I don't know who'd want them, but yeah, they all got donated. Oh, back in now the time. Halloween kids that went around yeah, for a few Jamie. years. And we actually did when we worked over there in the other barber shop. There was the the kids coming in. They were growing their fringes yeah. for like all of September and October to get them twisted with yeah. gel. Then for for Halloween, like it was incredible. It was unbelievable. And you know what else is great? Uh, the young offenders. Now I work with young offenders in a detention centre uh, in Dublin, but that's something really that we'd relate to even the yeah, staff and the show. boys like watching it like they'd really enjoy it i think it's brilliant like i'd hate to see that end yeah. as well but i know at some point the two young fellas are going to grow up and they yeah but it is very funny and become old offenders yeah they are are they look, actually yeah, yeah. look forward to it. oh well, yeah very funny that. is that the one there was a pj gallagher in that as well he was in it as a school teacher, was it? Yeah. It's based in Cork, yeah. yeah. It's a really good show. Yeah, it is. It's it's a really good show. Yeah. It is good. I um, enjoy that. It's a nice, like, it's kind of like, yeah, that's great. Like, you can go watch that now. If you enjoy that, yeah, yeah. you really enjoy you that. You would yeah. enjoy yeah. it, yeah. really enjoy that, I'd say. Like. So, sorry, I think we could watch after. What's the, uh, is there a plan now for any other shows that you're in on TV? Like, or? The odd time, like, if something comes up, I'll throw my hat in to go yeah. for it. Just there in February. I'm completely lost at all track on once. Start of the year we did a show in Smock Alley. Um it's part of Scene and Heard um, with Mental Mag Pro Productions. Um myself, Wes, um we're in it along with Eric O'Brien and uh, Emily Healy. It was a great show. Little twenty minute thing. It's called Part of Scene and Heard is you get given like this little condensed version of a show and it's like you watch it and you review it after and you go, oh, I'd like to see a longer version of this. It's like feedback from a live okay. audience and yeah. you get to watch yeah. a bunch of theatre and you get to enjoy yourself. And um, that was the last performance thing I've done. But because I'm doing this as well, I'm gearing more towards this because it's reliable when yeah. you can get the work in. Yeah. So once that work's going, 
Yeah. If I don't act again, I'm You're not okay, fussed. Yeah. Like, on TV, on Netflix for a while and all, like, with the, the movie yeah. and all. Like, yeah. Not that it's a milestone where I can say, yeah, I was on TV. Yeah, yeah I was on Netflix. Yeah. yeah. On the back of a DVD. I want a box set. And, like, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. But like, regardless all of that. how you're doing it, you're doing something you love. Yeah. So, and now I'm doing this now, and yeah. that's where I got the training, I got the passion. Yeah. I meet some fantastic young people when I'm uh, yeah. working with these guys and, like, yeah. There's days where you can be a head melt, but there's days where you just have a laugh yeah. and doesn't feel like work. No, but I love that because so many people are just stuck doing jobs that it's a rat race. Like they just have to do it they to earn their money. It. Like I know you still obviously have to earn your money, but at least you're doing something that you have a passion for. Yeah. You feel like you're helping younger people. You're you're doing something you enjoy. Like so, it is. And great. do you think because kind of growing up you were like quiet and you would. I wouldn't say nervous, but like a quiet jump flip. Do you think that helps you to kind of want to steer these kids the right way and bring them out of their comfort zone? Yeah, absolutely. Drama helped me. Like I said, yeah. that's one of those things when you go to youth theatre, everyone goes there because they want to be in youth theatre. Yeah. It's not like a summer buzz mm. where you're in a group because they just got put in there for the summer. Yeah. And you have no idea if you're going to meet someone who's on the same level as you. Yeah. Or you're just going to run into seven headbangers who went in because yeah. the summer boys and they're like oh now I have to be really awkward around these because you can't yeah. press them and that's just that's not against anyone that's just how yeah. yeah. but when you go to you theatre everyone speaks one language and it's you theatre yeah. Yeah. it doesn't matter what mood you like what music you like what you like doing when yeah. you're in there you speak the same language yeah. which is which is the theatre and you're there to do it yeah. and then you make friends doing that yeah. Yeah. And so you have all these oddball combinations going around yeah. like you have yeah. me, the little emo looking kid going around with your average looking yeah. person with anyone with the, the tracksuit and all that and short hair with this pair of people going how did this happen yeah, yeah. how did this friendship come from because yeah. you don't understand but it's just from that thing yeah. and they probably become the best of friends be like opposite ends yeah. because they're in that in the, the yeah. theater yeah. together that's, they, that's one thing they have in common like the people who i met in you theater back it was far thing i don't want to do the mat and scare myself but, but. <laughs> It was about nine, 97 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> but um, some of them people have gone to their weddings, have gone yeah. to the christening of their children, they've been to my wedding, yeah. they've yeah. been to the, the name and day of my son. We've grown up together and we've seen each other like, grow families and yeah. Yeah. fall in love with our partners and we've been all here for each other through all of this. Yeah. So yeah. it goes beyond the UT there. So I wouldn't have any of that if I didn't yeah. go over there yeah. one day because I couldn't play guitar. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's yeah. true. That's yeah. it. Reco, I have to say the Reco is absolutely fantastic yeah. for kids in Bally One. It's really good, isn't it, for yep. an outlet yeah. for them. And even kids that kind of have, they're kind of stuck and don't know what, to yeah. want, what they want to do. Like, or they could be just having shit at home and yeah. it's just somewhere but for them to But even stuff like the Summer Projects now, I know somebody on another podcast was asking about, do you remember Summer Projects? And I was like, like, they were so important, like, especially in these areas, like, they really were, like, to yeah. help people, kids come out with themselves. But... Like, I went to the tech in fourth year, and before that, even though I'd have, like, a bit of personality, and like, I'm able to talk to people, I still would have been quite shy and low confidence with regards to performance stuff. Yeah. But in fourth year there, I got involved in drama and dance and singing and all that, and it led on to anything else I did with that. But like that, I remember at fourth year, starting in that school, obviously the tech was, you know, quite loud and big personalities. It didn't matter when she went into the drama class, it didn't matter who was popular, who wasn't popular, like that, everybody was yeah. just the same. Doing you were all same. just in there expressing yourselves and, and doing something that you all enjoyed. And like, I really do, to now, like I always say, I feel like that and the Glen Youth Club shaped me in my teens, like it really did shape me. Like it was so important for me at the time. And I think lots of kids don't get the opportunities for that. Yeah. Do you know? And it's, yeah. I think it's really important, like I really do. Yeah, it's, it's, as you said, it's, it's kind of bringing out their social yeah. and personal skills. Yeah. Like, it's, it's really important. Yeah. Because and as you said, are, some of them would never get the opportunity at home, no. in their household. Exactly, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. good to have. That's, yeah. that's what's I think as well, do. attached to it, like, I know even from the way some of the young people I work with be, like, you know, acting or singing or that, that's a gay thing. Like, that's what they say, like, that's gay. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You're like realistically they most likely don't even feel that yeah. it, on the inside it's just a thing they have to say or they feel they have to say yeah. like going into somewhere like this actually gives you the opportunity to just be who you are exactly. and express who you are yeah. And, yeah. And, and open yourself up to other people and yeah. the way they are I, do, I really think it's yeah and it gives kids I suppose a good insight into yeah. you know being showing a bit of compassion yeah. towards other people you yeah. know where you'd walk down the road and like that you could see somebody who's 
like into them, you know, quiet yeah. and into themselves and then they'll go in there and within 10 minutes, I'm sure, like you say, yeah. they're, they're running around and, and like being mates with these yeah, other exactly, people that yeah. you would never see, you wouldn't put yeah. the two of them together. But he can also teach them to understand or to try to understand issues that probably never came to the forefront of their lives. But they're in there and they're maybe having to study the character of somebody who's grieving and they've mm. never gone through it at themselves. Yeah. But all of a sudden now they've this kind of understanding and more of an empathy and compassion yeah. for somebody else. Like it teaches those things that they may not have got otherwise. Mm. Did you, you know? find it through that, yeah? Through yeah. character work and stuff yeah. like that. What's your favourite part about what you do? I guess it's just the happiness I can get from it, the feedback, that yeah. kind of thing. Like yeah. When I go in with a group of lads and they're all looking at me going, all right, how's it going? Like, all right, yeah. lads. And you're trying to get through that barrier yeah. of like, hey, let's just work our work together. Then by the end, yeah. there's people laughing and they're just joking with you and they're just coming up and saying like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do this. And I just I worked on a project there. One lad towards the end was just like, he realised how much of a game where I am. It's mm. like, yeah, what should I download when I got home? I was like, yeah. oh, download that. Oh, no, I don't like scary games. Like, you'd be grand. Yeah. And then we're just sharing this little back and forward and all, and it's just yeah. like, it's not like the high fives in the last day, yeah. and it makes me go. But you're home. making a difference. Yeah, I'm going like, all right, so oh, they, 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 they weren't just putting up, they were like, they were really listening, yeah. and like, they yeah. did something, they enjoyed it, and they yeah. helped with that process. Yeah. There's a mutual respect there. And I was like, I'm going to like, kind of like, like, Shit, I wish I got to go back again. Yeah. And yeah. Like when people say goodbye and all that, like you real like I have I've cards at home with me, well my office, it's me desk in the car and sitting there and I have all the <laughs> stuff on that I work from. But I've cards that I've accumulated through the years. And they're um thanks for everything cards signed by all the young people and we um happy Christmas cards from the UK yeah. there and all just some someone will just come in and just give you a card on their own or someone will sign a card and go, Thank you. Yeah. And I just keep them there and like that's why you yeah, keep doing it. I'm that's why you're doing it. That's yeah. why you're doing it, yeah. yeah. Like doesn't matter if we do a show and everyone is absolutely tone deaf and wouldn't. Yeah. They got to do a show and you got to 20 years from now, they get to see them again down the pub. It's like, do you remember that day we done that show? Yeah. Yeah. And you get yeah. to keep that little memory. Yeah. That little core thing that unites them again. You yeah. go in there, you speak the language, it's all drama. Now you share this one little thing together. Yeah. You yeah. all take your own little part of that memory that you stick to. Yeah. And it's just that you give them that little core memory. Yeah. And so for anyone memory, yeah, watching this now, yeah. that's, that may for their kids or themselves want to get involved in something like this, you can tell them who did they contact, how did they do this? Just look up your local youth theatre. That's yeah. why I always say youth theatre. You know, I'm not going to show you on stage schools or anything like that because... This morning I around. said fucking youth club, didn't I? Again, <laughs> and we saw you yeah, last and yeah. live as well. Like, I don't know what I was calling it. Was but some youth clubs do have theatre. Yeah, it, yeah. it doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. Um, but what I will say is if you're looking for to help a young person to kind of just have fun and take part, I'd say stick away with stage skills, but I'm not going to have all stage skills go out there, he say that. They're just, they're formed differently. Yeah. We spoke about that I before feel Billy Barry. Oh, we did. Yeah. We spoke about I that, feel that type of... Whereas, yeah. when we I, did. in a youth theatre I worked in my own youth theatre, the, the three main things I always go to um, help grow and evolve are the young person's artistic, social and personal skills. Yeah. And I've seen, you know, you mentioned the social and personal thing. Yeah. Then. The other things, artistic is just drama. Yeah. And all the ins and outs of that. Social and personal are two skills that they can grow and learn inside exactly. that room, but they're the, the things that they will definitely take outside that room. Yeah. Forever. Sure, like, yeah. Go, no look what, what it did is. for you. You yeah. went from that quiet 14 year old lad to look at you now. You've no problem in walking into a room with a group of kids and just owning it and putting you them at ease. Yeah. yeah. You know, where you, you wouldn't have been able to do that at 14. If you go so in rattling, and they'll go, you. okay, let's have fun here. They feel or they just, or they yeah. just go, we don't. No, because there's no energy, like, yeah. but that kind of thing, like, even then, like, saying that confidence, I didn't have proper confidence in myself that I'd done the training yeah. to do this. Yeah. One of yeah. the modules was a leadership module, and I remember from that, it taught me how to just look people in the eye and talk to them. Yeah. yeah. Couldn't do that. Go into the shop and ask for a pack of cigarettes, hey, can we have 20? Yeah. Just doing that. Now I'm going to look up, all right, can I have, I'm just, yeah. yeah. I can start every conversation with an all right, or how yeah. Whereas before, <laughs> Oh, wait, I'm, doing that. Yeah. I'm not being that open. I think I yeah. know as well for young people, life is fucking hard right now. Like it is hard. Social media. Like we we are going to be talking to Jackie Fox in a couple of weeks, who who started her Coco killed herself because of online bullying and stuff like that. But I think programs like this are so important for kids to help build their confidence to yeah. to not only focus on the negatives and people putting you down and it's about being able to go in and open yourself up and have a safe space and be who you are yeah. and be all right with who you are and have people that 
feel that mutually and yeah. it's that's okay to be who you are. It doesn't matter if she's flagging you. Yeah. Do you know, it's, yeah. I think it's so important and the conversation we're going to have with Jackie is so important. Um, but like I think all this kind of stuff feeds into that. Like having these projects and, you know, programs are, you know, I think they're imperative to young yeah, people. Yeah. No matter what area they're yeah, from, they're absolutely. really, really important. Like building have. the social skills is really important and yeah. confidence and all that because like that as well, if you're in a situation, you know, when we were kids, if you were bullied in school, you, you walk, you were finished school and you go home and that's gone, the yeah. body's gone and you can enjoy the rest of your day or whatever, no matter yeah, how it's like beep, much it's beep, affected beep. you, but it's on their phones now, yeah. there's no getting away from it around, do you know what I mean, but like that going into a youth theatre and having fun with people yeah. that they wouldn't ordinarily be with, yeah, or, exactly. you know, it just giving that, that bit of confidence, mm. would, they go into school the next day and be like, fuck that, like, uh, they, I'm doing something that they can't do, yeah. but, you know, so that does help, of course. It's yeah. Like, it's in their outlet as well, then yeah. they might speak up in that part place as well where they might not speak up at home, where they might not speak up at exactly. school, where, and then you can just put things in place to start the conversation for that young person to help them, do you want that? Yeah. But I'll always say is you're saying, what can you do for the young person, like to say it from now, it's really important as well that the young person wants to be there. Yeah. yeah. Don't send yeah, the young person them. somewhere, yeah. they don't want to be there. Yeah. Like, I say there might be a 0.001% chance you might actually hook them and you want to be there, mm-hmm. Yeah. but don't send them somewhere they don't want to be. Yes. Yeah. It's just straight away this anxiety and this pressure of wanting yeah. to be there. Ask them about it. Yeah. Say, hey, look at these things and try it out. Yeah. But don't just send them, pay for it, and then just kick them in. Yeah. They're, they help them. They're not a babysitting service. Yeah. Absolutely. And don't yeah. treat them that way because the young person is going to get nothing from it. Yeah. And all they're doing with them is looking for a bit of free time. Yeah. Yeah. It's a buy in from it. Like the, everybody has to buy in. That's obviously yeah. the young person, I think, more importantly than anybody. Has to you have be to buying want into to be there, yeah. yeah. It's probably the only way you take it. I always do it. Your first day is always free. Yeah. I always say, try it before you buy yeah. it. Yeah. And then, if you enjoy it, give me a text and then I'll send you all the sign up information. Yeah. yeah. And then we'll go from there. Yeah. But don't come in, give me money, then they go home. We don't want to yeah. do it. And then we have to do this rigmarole of me having to do all that and then I have yeah. to. Yeah. Paperwork and books and all yeah. that to fill out and all but that. But it's yeah. definitely, <laughs> you have nothing to lose by trying it. Yeah. And, and it anyway. also puts pressure on the child. Because if they, if it is, was a situation where the parents are coming in and saying, right, uh, sign him up now for 10 weeks. I know, uh, yeah. What do I owe you? Do you know what I mean? If that kid doesn't like, doesn't enjoy it then, and they go home, they're like, oh, I'm not going to say that I don't like it, I'll just go. Yeah. You know what I mean? I they're they're not going to get the best yeah. day over it, and neither will the rest of the kids yeah. in that club or in that. Yeah. That, that, but even that like on that saying that, like, I was kind of doing that a bit with my daughter with a dance thing so it was every friday for one hour it was 10 euro they weren't getting on it but it was like a lot of kids in the room running around really when yeah. i looked at it and i was like no you have to go to dancing and i kept doing it for and i was like why am i doing this and it was actually placing pressure on me and her and it literally was a babysitting service for it when i looked properly at it, it was like this is mad like there's nothing being got out of this mm-hmm. realistically like what's the point in it and now like she's in obviously the gaa and She's in gear, guys. She's in swimming, but I think she's getting something out of, and that's important. Yeah. Now, we absolutely, I'd love her to, every, doesn't everybody say she should oh be in drama? God, she should, be she should 100%. Stage, yeah. She should be. I just can't commit to it. I can't make it yeah. because of my sh- shift work. But uh, yeah, it is something I'd absolutely love her because she's so expressive and all that. I'd, I'd love her to be able to focus that properly sometimes. Yeah. Because she, <laughs> she's, she's that brilliant. type, you're like, I can't leave her for a second because I don't know what she's going to come out with. Yeah. Um, she's hilarious. I actually did a live interview with oh her. No. And She'll never do oh, a live interview I'm again with her, won't you? I'll never do another one with her. She's like, I, I will do one with her, but it'll be pre recorded yeah. so I can cut out some of the shit she says. <laughs> she hung me, she says to me, um, I says to her, So, Ali, are you going to have kids when you're older? And she's like, Ah! Do you know what? I really wanted kids, but then I saw you with your kids, and I thought, <laughs> no, not having any. I was like, this is fucking live. I can't take this down. Scared, <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, yeah. Oh, you're like, you kill her? honestly, I'd be like, shit. But I'd would love her to, like, I, any of the groups she's in, like the GEA and all, like they'd all know us. So she's suffers with confidence issues yeah. even though she comes across as loud but I'd love her to be in something that's because I know how much I got from that as a team yeah. like I remember in Glen Youth Club we weren't actually part of the youth club my mum worked up there and there was a youth club 
attached to that did dance and they were doing the show Grease and something happened to Sandy, the girl that was playing Sandy, she broke her leg or something and they were going to hold these emergency auditions and my mum was like, Tracy can sing and I was like, I was so shocked, I was like, what? No, I got the part, I got, but that was my first part was yeah. a lead role as like a 14 year old or something like that but I know how much I ended up getting from that whole experience and that teacher I've never found her since. I've yeah. actually searched for her. Her name is Lise Conlon. She will always have impacted my life. Like, mm. I will, she, I'll, she'll never leave me. Yeah. She'll always have been such an important role in my life at that age. Do you know? And I can never tell her that because yeah. I can't find her. Yeah. Um, and she's a fucking great singer now. But it's, <laughs> I think, I just, I can't express enough. I think it's so important for yeah. kids. But like, that, you have to buy into it as well. Like, yeah. you know, otherwise... Exactly, and you've made a business out of that, like as well, you yeah. know, which is it's great. Like, and that's I suppose your outlet from when you're not in your your serious job. Yeah, that's kind of your chill time. You enjoy that. Oh yeah, like we love it. Like yeah. we did a gig there on Saturday night, and it was like just brilliant. Like it was like we're getting paid for this. Like it yeah. was great. Like you know, <laughs> but but like that, I like thirteen year old me looking out. Would I'd never be doing that? Yeah, I'd never be standing up there singing and dancing and messing in front of people like that on a stage yeah. ever but yeah i found myself through that and yeah i do i think all kids should have the opportunity for it oh, all yeah. that like your workshop yeah a lot of workshops yeah. 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 yeah like um sorry i have to cough again sorry <coughs> <coughs> apologies um i've come to like own this kind of saying that i have now like when i work with young people when i'm doing these workshops you have to yeah. plan them ahead of time and you have what's but the young people do, and they see games or exercise games, and then the behind the scenes of what you're actually doing with them. Yeah. And um, I've always saying that, and it always just comes out as word garbage. And I'm like, the easiest way of saying it is, and it's the truth, you have you gotta be sneaky with them. Yeah. You are, you're, you're being absolutely sneaky when you're doing this. If you want young people to start connecting physically, to start breaking down that barrier early, to then reincorporate it again a couple of weeks down the line, if you put everyone, it's a really easy thing you can do. If you put 15 young people in a room who are there for the first week and maybe one or two might know each other, and you got right, everyone give each other a hug now, real quick. Mm. What? The two mates might hug. Yeah. And mm. just go, I'm not doing that. Like, why are you? No, that's weird. Like, all right, fair enough. But you wouldn't you do that. Have a game of uh, Stuck in the Mud. Stuck in the Mud does two things. One, it's an energizer. Two, it's just to get the energy high and it gets people running around and it's a little bit of a warm up. And if you get caught, the only way you can um, free someone is to give them a hug. And all of a sudden it's a mechanic in the game. Mm-hmm. Ah. And now people are hugging without realising they're hugging. Yeah. Go one step further. Don't you stuck stuck in the mud. I go around and I'm on. And I can catch you by just tapping your shoulder. But I'm going to walk really slowly. And I'm just going to keep walking, I'm going to keep walking. And I'm not going to catch anybody. I'm just going to let everyone save each other. And the only way you can save someone from getting caught, so I'm going to walk around, I'm going to catch her. I'm going to stop right here like this. And like, I'll just, if no one comes over, let's say everyone's down the other end of the room, leaving this person around, I'm going to go, who's going to save them? You have to hook them to save them. If you're hooking someone, I can't catch you. Then all of a sudden, someone go, right, and you sprint back yeah. up. All of a sudden, you're going to hook off the police stranger. I'm like, okay, cool. Because then I say, I reinforce it. It's as simple as that. Mm-hmm. Just hook someone, and I can't catch them. Yeah. You want to win this, I don't. And then Very you go around doing that, and then this little thing starts getting, you're breaking down that little barrier, and all of a sudden, that. They're not afraid to connect physically if they're going to do a little improv piece or anything like that. Yeah. If it might be, oh, we need to do a family portrait. Here the families, they all go arm in hand, or are hugging, or they're like, no kind of tear on yeah. each other. Won't do that, but now that you've done that connection, it might just help them out a little bit, and then you will be able to do that. They'll yeah. get, all right, family portrait, right, kill, deadly, and break. Yeah. Because if you put the work in already, and you can reincorporate it again down the line. And again, there's like, what you're doing and then you're hitting those skills but you're being sneaky yeah i'm making you connect without telling us what to do i'm yeah. making you hug each other to make that connection but it's just because it's a mechanic in the game and yeah. then that just reincorporates and like i said there'd be someone that 13 year old person got on oh, i don't want to do this looking mm. back by the end of your nine or ten weeks in a your first term of youth theater the people who are all looking at each other and they're all spread across the room afraid to look at each other and talk to each other are all um they're all in before you're in and they're all laughing and they've all gone to centre together and they're all yeah. looking at each other's they're phones connected. and they're all going, did you get that Snapchat I sent you? you get that video I sent you? Because mm. now they've connected again, like you said. Yeah. And they've all got each other's phone numbers. They've all, they're all connected. They're all in a group chat with each other now. And now moved outside of the... Brilliant. And now you have all the 14 brand new friends, if yeah. at least, at most. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
and then you have to break for Christmas and there's tears. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, away, like, uh, it happens all the time. People are like, I'm going to miss you all. Uh, what are you yeah. going to for Christmas? And then you see each other after the new year and yeah. then you realise what are two I've kept in touch over yeah. the Christmas are. And you've done that. Yeah. You've, now you have this group. Yeah. And that group is ready to start going further into drama and they're ready to look, look at a script. Yeah. Because now they're not relying on, oh, what if I'm teamed up with someone else and I don't know, they look weird or whatever it is, that's gone now. Yeah. yeah. These are the people you've been hugging. These are the people you've been hugging. These are the people you've been playing silly games yeah. with. These are the people you've been doing drama games with, where you can only talk using numbers, and you're saying absolute nonsense. Yeah. yeah. And you have all these memories together. Again, it's that core memory, and they're all pulling their own little strand from it, and that's their own little thing that connects them. So when you meet each other again, twenty years down the line, whatever it is, they go. Do you remember that day we were uh, running around and yeah. your man? What's his name? I have to keep trying to catch us again. <laughs> we need to knock each other out, squeeze yeah. each other. But it is all good memories. Yes. All positive yeah. memories, like. It is, yeah. and that's what. And I thought you'd you know. be still friends with people that you went uh, yeah. with, with, like. So these are you're making like lifelong friend connections for these people yeah, that yeah. they wouldn't ordinarily have. Like these people find themselves now, and I think it's really important that young people find a place to be themselves. Yeah, especially because a lot of young people don't know who they are at the yeah. moment. Yeah, and there's a lot of people who are being told what they're not allowed to be at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And I don't want to really go into that kettle of fish, but no, you theater, true, no, you yeah. theater has every shape, size, yeah, no matter who cares. you are. Yeah. You come and you be yourself. You be what you yeah. want, like. And everyone yeah. there goes, cool. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Yeah. It's that like, is really cool. And is, they're yeah. all in that same mindset. It's like, cool. Do I call you a different name? Or do I just say something different to you? Yeah. Or I talk to like, the referee to you and I go, they just go, this, this, that. And I, we all look at each other and go, that's it. Yeah. Perfect. And let's move on forward. That person gets to be who they want to be. Yeah. Who they feel that they are. And that could and be only an hour in the day, way. but they get to be that person. Yeah, like exactly. They get to be the way that what makes them happy and how they feel, yeah. who they truly are. And yeah. that's another little thing you get to And that one hour yeah. could get them through the other 23 of every yeah. day. Yeah, you know yeah That they know they have that yeah. space. Yeah, because yeah. you wouldn't know what's going on in a, in a, a teenager's head anymore. You'd be very surprised how many people come forward to Compared to when we were growing up. It's, yeah. it's it's really hard for teenagers these days. There's pressure from all sides, from everywhere. I had a lot of young people come up and tell me stuff that goes on outside the, yeah. the workshops. Yeah. Stuff that's going on at home. Yeah. Yeah. Um, nothing too serious, but just stuff that's just like they just come up and talk to you. Yeah. It's like oh this happened. Oh I got in a fight and like you just play it. I was like what are you scrapping for? Like, yeah. It's the second time there. You're like oh this happened at home and it's just like they'll open up to you. Yeah. yeah. And when you can open up to you over those little things and you know something truly. Um, terrible or awful word going on in that they'll life. Come to you. you know they're going to come to you. Yeah. And yeah. all the procedures in place and how to go yeah. forward with that. Yeah. yeah. And that's all in the ethos and the paperwork and the when people know that and the parents know that and all that. Yeah. Really all good. my training and all that's all part of it and all that. And yeah. because you're, I suppose, kind of young enough to be able to connect with these kids as well, like they they would feel like they can go to you with it. If they ha- if there was a, a big issue, a big mm. problem, you know they're not feeling like they don't have someone to go to. Yeah, I think the respect is there for that. I wouldn't say young; they make me feel old. Won't lie. Just, <laughs> just, just so, yeah. Ah, oh, someone said something the other day. Someone mentioned so, someone said something. The other, one of the other lads went, "Who was J Lo?" Uh, I went, "What? Who <laughs> was J Lo?" Yeah. Only like the, one of the biggest superstars yeah, in the world. No, was, but then there's like someone younger than them, and they're like. They're going, yeah, yeah, I love Tupac and all. I'm like, how do you know who Tupac is? Yeah. How do you and not know who J-Lo Tupac. is? Yeah. I'm just like, it's just I one of those think, things. I think the world is just mad. Yeah. Like, like, Aaliyah's favourite artist is Tupac, and she's 11. It's just one of those, yeah. Like, do you know? If yeah. you ask me to go through the top 10 artists at the moment, I probably know about like 20%. Yeah. yeah. Well, I only would know them because now of DJing and stuff, like, cause the, and the lads are work, obviously, because yeah. they're always, they do digital music and they update their CDs, so I kind of, for a 42 year old I think I'm fairly cool on the music scene Yeah, um, no, but that would be the only reason other than that I wouldn't have a clue I'd just listen to me old that's stuff. what I do now yeah. I'm, I'm running out and I'm getting sick of listening to the same stuff now yeah. me too but like yeah I'm like there was a time I was like why are you listening to that shit for and then I yeah. straight away I'm like Oh no. Yeah. Oh, no. I heard the exact same thing yeah, when right. I was that age. Yeah. I'm getting old now. <laughs> yeah. No, I was going to accept it. I just probably not into what's out at the moment. Yeah. But yeah. I'm not going to put it down. Yeah. yeah. Or do you know what's gas now as well? Like you'd hear, you'd hear a song like on, on the radio and I'd be singing along to it and one of the kids would be like, How do you know that yeah. song? Like, that was out before you were even heard of, you <laughs> little bracket away. <laughs> They're hilarious now, the kids, yeah. 
Yeah, love cool. or do, but um, they make me feel old. Yeah. How was your, what was your experience of school growing up? It was now, quiet. if you were quiet, like... It was quiet. Um, Where did you go to school? Did you find it hard, like... The comp. Um, no, I didn't find it hard. Obviously, there was some, like, some dickheads. Yeah. So, you know, when you go around looking the way I did, there was times where, like, there was, like, kind of bullying going on. Yeah. But um, it was never to the point where I was followed outside. I never, yeah. I never left the school. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But like school was kind of like the, the place where it happened. Yeah. wasn't wasn't as bad as some young people have. Yeah. But um, it was enough to kind of rattle me, and mm. I still wouldn't bother saying hello to some of them people today. Yes. Like, yeah. I'd be the same. Same kind of thing. Some people. And did have you find when you started to do like Fair City and Demo and Ivor? Did you find some of those? Kind of, I suppose, from your past, would be like trying to talk to you, and like, oh, I know no. you years. No, that never happened. No, no. good, because I, I, I yeah, kind of love that. Yeah, I find that a bit now, and I'm like, you are a cunt. Do <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? No, like, usually, like, 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 I'm fucking trying to talk Facebook to you Facebook trying to add you, like, so, well, so we, that yeah. we talk yeah. about this on you. Instagram, like, some people now, because we'd have a decent following, some people that weren't so nice and scared would now try to follow, and like, why are you following me? Yeah. Like, you were actually like you horrible. Said, people yeah. saying a friend, horrible. Friend book request, yeah. uh, friend book, Facebook request, I'm like, yeah, like you weren't I don't, nice. I don't, really, I don't really want it. Yeah. Like, fair enough, everyone else thinks you sound, but like, yeah, yeah. Not I know you're not. Got a prick you <laughs> like, you went there your way like, to like, yeah. like, be an arsehole to yeah. 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 I mean, like, no matter what it was, I was always going to be the yeah. butt of your joke or something. Yeah. And at the end of the day, I never give them satisfaction of replying to them and saying that now, but I'd think that in my head and be like, no, to But at the end of the day, like, the result of that could have been you going home and doing something to yourself. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm. it's... Yeah, absolutely. You know. Yeah, my, my years of skill were fucking horrific. I hated it. I hated it every single day of it. Like, yeah. But once, like that, once I got out of school, then I was all right. I yeah. found myself and all the rest yeah. of it. But you can't find yourself while someone's kind of... Wearing you down. Constantly. Wearing you down. Yeah, yeah it's very hard to... Yeah. Yeah. Because I was in, say, Mary's in Cluster and I hated it. All yeah. girls girl, I hated it. I just felt like everybody's posh, they all hate me. And the minute I went to the tech, it was just a totally different experience. Yeah. It was like, yeah, don't get me wrong, I loved it, but, yeah. but I loved it because I started in transition year and I did the drama. Yeah. That was yeah, why I, I loved it. And the teacher obviously was all artsy and he was like, you know, be who you want to be. And like, it was great. I loved it. And like, but it totally changed my experience of school in general. Yeah. You know, don't get me wrong, there was loads of people that were bullies and weren't nice people in school and, yeah. you know, wanted to start fights. I got in trouble myself yeah. in the school. But it was a whole different experience with regards to making me feel like I could actually be myself yeah. than when I was in St Mary's. Yeah. You know? So, um, and I hope that's changed, not going down St Mary's mm. now, I hope that's changed going forward. But yeah. it was a, a convent school with run by yeah me too you know what I mean? so, and so you know yeah. <laughs> yeah i just personally think we need to move forward now and away from all that yeah. stuff um but yeah it's yeah skill yeah. skill was up and down for me and when we're working with the transition year students is that the same thing it's the huge theater like as well yeah when i was working i'd done a project there uh last september i was working up in adamstown up in uh Lucan and all the t- TY students were broken into different groups so some were doing music, some were doing drama, some were doing poetry, spoken word poetry, film, all different aspects and they all worked together on a big huge project, it's called The Big Tree. Yeah. Because um, up there they have nothing. They literally yeah. just have all these thousands and thousands of houses and they have like a landis, that's it. It's not a youth centre, there's no mm-hmm. like, they have nothing, like this is what it was all about, like them using their voice. Yeah. And it's go- pushing a great direction, they have their own little youth council now and it's they're part of the talks and stuff like that, so it's huge positive plus for them. But it's that kind of thing where like it's like you've never been in the youth club, like no, I've never been in the youth centre. I'm like, mm. What? Yeah. yeah. you know, we're like Yeah. I'm trying to explain what the racket is, but like it's kind yeah, of Yeah, like, I never yeah. was either. I'm like trying, exp- trying to explain what it is, but like it's like trying to explain a colour to a blind person. Mm. Yeah. Who's been blind the whole life. Just don't it's have. like how do you explain a colour to someone who can't see a colour? Yeah. Like, yeah. How do you explain what a youth centre is like it's a big room. Yeah. Like, it's a building and you can be young, go be inside. It. <laughs> it's like school, except you don't have work. Yeah. Like, like, uh, How do you explain it? Yeah. Oh, there's probably an easy, definite, yeah. easy way to explain what it is, but I was just caught in the moment going, Yeah. What? You don't know what a youth yeah. centre is. Yeah, no, we never have. But like, that. even now, when you look, so many estates and all are being built, and there's actually nothing like youth centres being there's built there, to yeah. coincide with the amount of young people yeah. that are going into those areas. Like, you were actually like, able to take the name Swords Youth Centre. Youth Centre, yeah, because there never was one. No, you yeah. I know. 
No. And I probably would have loved that actually growing up. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't think I'd get it. It was one of the things going, if you're growing somewhere, just see so can you get the name of the area plus you there. Yeah, yeah. One, it's the name. Yeah. And two, if someone's looking for you taters in the area, they're just gonna just search you up without realising it. Yeah. yeah. And then you're gonna be the first yeah. result and go, oh yeah. Would you look to open one in Ballymun since you live here? I was going to, but there's other there's drama classes in the access, there's also stuff in the record. Okay. Um it's it's the nature of the beast is you have to charge for these things. Yeah. Yeah. And looking for space and all that and you're gonna be competing with these as well and there's always gonna be more going. I don't want to do that. Yeah, they're yeah. doing great yeah. work. Yeah, they're doing great work. And right. they've kick-started your, yeah. your, yeah. Life, your career. And obviously that's not very business orientated or anything like that, but at the same time, I'm competing with stuff that's there and it's probably just going to fall yeah. yeah. dead in the war. Yeah. Kind of thing. So what I always do is... You have to be like, realistic as yeah, well. I just yeah. say, look, if you ever need me, I'm around yeah. and yeah. I'll help out in every way that I can. Very good. Yeah. And you do go in and out, don't you, between Reco and... and yeah, I haven't been over to like Reco now, yeah, like ever since I left. But like, I'm always... Really? Yeah. Uh, um, but, uh, he'll be over. Yeah. yeah he's on his way. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it'll be, obviously it'll be great to do. Yeah. Um, again, like I'm throwing my hat into the ring to look for it learn to walk like that. Yeah. Um, like so you're gonna work with like the Ashland and stuff like that just to start working with young people in this area yeah it is and really important it's handy it's local and I don't have to get buses to come anywhere yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly but no it's just, just to help out more as yeah. yeah. you can and, um, at the moment yeah. you're, you're kind of focused on 12 to 17 year olds isn't it would yeah, you look at going younger you can but the younger it is the younger you go the more that a young per- that young of a person is not going to get those benefits the artistic social of personal yeah um it's more, you're doing more like fun classes. Yeah. You're kind of teetering on that babysitting service. Yeah, like, that's what I'm talking That kind of thing. Yeah. But there's, you come in, play games, and you do drama stuff. Mm. Yeah. Definitely wouldn't do a two hour with them, you'd probably do an hour with them. Yeah. Um, I got a lot of calls from people going, hey, come, come on, son or daughter, join. I was like, yeah, what age do you? Yeah, they're four. I'm like, what? No. <laughs> four? I like, what? Jesus. Yeah, I just, I just, I just, just look over an hour off. <laughs> I, just, I just finally got my five year old to go do yeah. horning. You know I, mean? like, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't know the conversation to have, like, especially yeah. with Charlie going. So what like, age kind of would they, would you start at and like leave at? And twelve whatever. is where okay. you start with me. Yeah, they did go toward the end, but I dropped to the twelve, and then, but well, technically it's seventeen, and eighteen. Mm. But like there's guys and there's people that are going, oh, I'm eighteen this year. Oh my god. Yeah. Do I just leave? Yeah. Yeah. Don't want to know. <laughs> stay. Uh, yeah, that's stay cool. and then like Yeah. Like You'll probably you're find gonna you're gonna become you're te- technically an adult now and the yeah. new part of your life is gonna start seeping yeah. into your yeah, exactly. and other responsibilities to take and over. And some of them might start to work alongside you. Yeah. That, the opportunity don't there as well, leave, yeah. like that is a thing. Yeah. yeah, members become junior leaders and stuff like yeah. that. But yeah, I'm never gonna go, Oh, what's that? Can I blow out your candles and go out the door? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, not going to do that. Yeah, stay, imagine. Stay, become, you're here, you're part of it, you're yeah. part of the furniture at this stage, you're going to stay. Yeah. But, um, like, like I said, they will naturally just live. That's it, yeah. Their, their adult lives are going to take over, yeah. their social lives are going to start. Yeah, yeah. Get girlfriends yeah. and boyfriends. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, you're going to be coming into a new Mind level of, a new level of school. Like, yeah. Oh, you're going to your third level of education. If you can still find ways to be here and be yeah. with us for two you're hours, then you're more than welcome. Yeah. That kind of way, but yeah. There, you must get a great sense of achievement when you when you do kind of break them and have them hugging and holding hands and all that yeah, stuff. And great, watching them, like you must sit back and smile to yourself and say, "This is this is what's all." It's great, like we all because we all like rip the mick out of each other and all, like you know that we all kind yeah. of like they'll, yeah. they'll intentionally say stuff just to yeah, enjoy you up and all, yeah. like yeah. don't start. Like we're at that <laughs> level now, where, like I can literally just go don't start up. I'll box the head off you. There's no intention to ever do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then it's just the laughter. Well, yeah, the that's laughter the way they speak to their friends. Yeah, so you have to. You have to find that. Balance. The laughter yeah. is there, and the, like the the camaraderie is there. Yeah, you're still young enough for them to get the fun now with you as well. And you're a bit don't feel it, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't feel it. He's a bit of a spuddy. <laughs> <laughs> you got the right role there. Um, what? Let me say. Yeah, what would you like to see yourself doing in ten years? I don't know. Probably, I'd love to have a more like stable, up and running, youth I'd love my own place. Yeah. I'd love to get a building. Yeah. Put our name on it. Yeah. And then just start running. Yeah. Cla- weekly classes, daily classes. Yeah. I'll like get those really young kids in and uh, young people, sorry, and let them have their hour of fun. Yeah. Out the first, second, third, seniors, hold your man. Yeah. That's the goal. That's yeah. how the lads up in um, Dundalk operate. 
Would yeah. you go towards like writing and directing movies I or do, screenwriting? I do yeah, at the odd time. You do I do at the odd time. I do a lot with the youth theatre. We devise our own pieces. Mm. Like the group I'm up with Dun Dundalk at the moment. We'd worked for ten weeks devising these characters and concepts, and then we'd done another ten weeks and we solidified it down. And we had all the characters, the the general story we wanted to do, and then over the Easter Bank holiday, I took all that and I wrote it out for them. Yeah, and I. Ended up writing a eighty something page script for them. Never doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot. It's sixteen there people. There is a lot. It's sixteen for you people. You have to make sure sixteen there? people are all where they need to be in the script, and it all makes sense. Yeah. And it's not just yeah garbage. Yeah. And it's yeah. hard work. It is. It is. It's a lot of hard work. But they put all that bit effort in. Like if I done it from scratch, I wouldn't have done it. Yeah. yeah. I, my head. I just no. Nah, I chance close laptop. Yeah. Change career. Yeah. Change career. <laughs> um. But they made all these things. They came up with these concepts. They had these improv sessions where all these funny lines came from, where all these concepts came from, and then I had to put it all together in this big mad mismatch of a script. Because yeah. the play doesn't take place on a stage. It takes place out on the street and in, yeah. in Wales. Yeah, yeah. And Very good. You follow it around and you see these four different stories have their start in the middle. Yeah. And then they all come together at the end. Very and good. then they're all together and it's just all this... It's mad. It's called madness because it's madness. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, it's fun. And if you weren't doing what you're doing now, what would you be doing? If you weren't involved in any way with I don't know the arts. Um, that's the thing. I don't know. I was involved from such an early age. Yeah. I honestly don't. You never know. saw yourself doing that now. More than likely, if I'm if everything else is the same up to this point, and like I have my wife and I have my son and where we are, I'd probably just I'd probably picked up a, a trade or just yeah. doing that and working. Yeah. Every way I could. Mm. I love that you genuinely love the youth yeah, theatre and working doing. with the kids because, like, realistically, you've got a pretty decent background, like CV as such. Do you know what I mean? Like, you could be going out and chasing roles, but you actually genuinely prefer this, don't you? It's yeah, it's fun to do. Yeah, yeah. Like, even again, when you're talking about it, you can see you're happy and yeah. you're passionate about yeah. it. Yeah, great. if you weren't passionate, it like. Don't do this if you're not passionate. Yeah. yeah. Don't do it if you're looking there. And you're like that with the little fella at home as well, aren't you? Like, it's all, all kind of yeah. fun playtime and, Good. you know, uh, all the arts and crafts. And yeah. Good. He, he's, he's, he's a character, isn't yeah. he? Like, yeah. And that's, I suppose, all down to you and the lovely wife as well. Yeah. yeah. And Lewis got married last year. Congratulations. Yeah, is so it much. a year yet? It's a year in August, August 14th. What's your wife saying? Uh, Megan Rose. Hello, Megan Rose. She's gorgeous as <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, she's lovely. But yeah. So he's off the market, ladies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, very long time sorry, now. Sorry to break the news. <laughs> um, who would you love to have a pint with, if you could? Completely. Apart yeah, from us, obviously. <laughs> obviously. I don't. Are you looking for a famous answer? answer? Are you looking for like a sloppy answer? Any, sloppy any answer, answer. Or we'll, have, we'll have a sloppy one and a famous one. I don't know. I guess I'd love that would point me around that again. Yeah. Yeah. Those things, but yeah. That's the the eyes the, yeah, the way. That's the one, right? That's that's not the answer. <laughs> ah, no, that is the only one. <laughs> I don't know. That's kind of a strange thing because I don't really drink anymore. No, <laughs> just wait. Tell us about your granddad. <coughs> Pardon me. Yeah, um, it's great hair. I looked like a point to kiss. He moved to Spain, so like he had the tan, he had the grey hair, and all that. But um, yeah, just a deadly man. Yeah, all the stories about and all that. Like, was that um, a big impact on your life, though? Yeah, he did like again like he lived in Spain so like I'd only seen him extremely sporadically yeah and um, just a year a couple of years before he passed away um, I just happened to go see him me and Megan Rose went over to see him and I'm kind of glad I did that yeah because I wouldn't have got to see him again yeah. and I have those memories and I have those pictures yeah. and all that but yeah it's just he's just he's my dad's dad yeah and like I can see the way I look up to my dad and avoid my dad I can, I can see the yeah. kind of thing go in like we all look like each other, we all admire each other the same yeah. way, we all kind of like, yeah. just kind of like And you're up. a tight family, aren't you? Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's Big a, family, but yeah, tight. Yeah. Family sprawls, like, we talk about a family tree, like family forest, it's huge. <laughs> yeah. Because of all the people marrying in and yeah. it's all family of America, family of Romania, family over here, family over there. Yeah. So, big family. Right, if you could sit down then for 10 minutes and have a point with a celebrity, who would it be? I don't know. And why? <laughs> I don't know. Like, you know <laughs> I'm a bitch. It's, it's, it's one of those things. Like, who would I want to meet? Like that. Yeah. Like, in Ireland, you're pretty I, content I, in yourself, aren't you? Like, does that's nearly a, a sure answer there? Like, I don't know. Know. like, who would I like to meet? It's just the airports announcements going yeah. on yeah. in the background. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Oh no, I'm on a spot. Hey. <laughs> Would you like to have a point with? <laughs> Deflect that back table, I think. Ah, oh, you fuck are you? Not that easy, is it? <laughs> no, it's not <laughs> that easy. Who would I have a point with? Ah, oh. Jesus, I don't know. I don't fucking like anyone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only messing. Um, I've loads. I don't know. I'd I'd probably have a point with Christy Dignam in all fairness. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. he's he can talk. Oh God, Ireland, like. he can talk. And th- that's one man that I wouldn't be able to talk over now. In all fairness. He's he's a talker. Yeah, he he's is. A he's a story talker. about everything. Yeah, and I don't I don't know. Probably my granddad actually as well. My granddad died when uh, Nikita was six months old, and actually a funny story. I had, like that, I went to see him not long before he died and it was like, I was out, out walking and I said, you know what, I'll just walk down to my granddad's. I lived in Clowlock at the time and he lived in Clowlock. So I walked down to him and he wasn't expecting me. And I got into the house and my nanny says to me, I have to go to the chemist, you can come with me. And I had the baby in the buggy and Nikita was only six months old, she's 22 now. And uh, this was six months before he died, but he wasn't, we didn't think he was going to die. Like, So we were... Uh, nanny says to me, you come around to the chemistry with me, she was gas. she was driving over curbs and everything and I remember I left the baby in the house and then my granddad had, had MS so he was paralysed from uh, on his left side like so he he was he was purple like on the left side so he always wore a glove and I says to him now if she cries you can just give her a bottle because it was like a, you know one of these buggies with a car seat sitting yeah. on top so he says, Ashley, be grand, don't worry. Because I knew he could use his right yeah. arm to hand her the buggy. Or the, the bottle, like. And I went off to the chemist with me nanny. And when I came back, the child, she, Nikita was on his lap. And what? I was like, how the fuck did he do that? And he says, I'm glad you weren't here to see it. He says, so oh, God. He was actually really strong. So when she started wind and he opened her thing and he just lifted her by the screw. Oh, my God. And onto his lap and gave her the bottle. But I was like... He died a few months later, but he was nearly 81, I think, when mm. he died. And I always wonder, I always say to myself, I would love to have known. Yeah. This, I'd love to be a fly on the wall to see the conversation that he had with her. Yeah. Because he definitely would have had a, a chat yeah. with her. And yeah. I know he would have. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I would. I'd like to have a point with my granddad. Yeah, my dad's dad. Yeah, that was cool. What about you? Well, like, I'm thinking famous people. Michael Jackson, a million percent. We all know how I feel about him. Celine Dion now is at cancelling again. Is she? Officially cancelled. I think she should be barred then. She should be just banned. Um, oh, no, I feel sorry for her. 300 I, Oh, I no, she's not well, isn't she? Yeah, that's right. Um, and then... Oh, I feel bad now, don't Okay, yeah. Like, <laughs> here, if, I, if I was in the acting game here in Ireland, it'd have to be, like... Brendan Gleeson or Liam Neeson like 100% yeah. you actually said I, Brendan Gleeson yeah I'd love to sit down not yeah. for a pint but he would be Fact, I, yeah. 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 I think he's yeah. amazing mm. he used to teach in Belcam College as well and I remember growing Did up like, the lads loved him yeah he was a teacher over there I think he taught history or something but he uh, I just think he's sound yeah I love him yeah he is pretty cool funny. isn't he yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. I, I would film he was great and was in Brioche did you see oh, that I love it Sure it's actually so funny. Yeah, I'm not really, I'm not a big fan of uh, Colin Farrell. Colin Farrell. I'm not, I don't know why. But I actually love that film. I actually yeah. think they're very funny the two yeah. together. And phone box. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Phone box. Yeah. yeah. I, I like to call it Colin Farrell and phone box. Yeah. yeah. He spent the whole thing in the whole phone box. Um. And yeah, the other one I suppose what would be a big role that you'd want to do, but I asked you that as well, and of course the answer was Batman. Was but it Batman? Batman. <laughs> <He's> like, <"What?" laughs> Batman. But if, uh, aside from Batman, the bat light must have a Batman light. You must have been on the front. <laughs> it was probably me tattoo. You probably just couldn't think of it. No, I love Batman. Head. Like, yeah, but suppose I was thinking about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's a Batman. Yeah. yeah. Was there ever a part though you were like, oh, I'd love if I was playing that role? I think like. There's been parts over the years like we just you don't get them. I'm not a big get them and you kinda of see them playing out, you're like Yeah, you should have been me. <laughs> no, I don't say that. No, because obviously if it should have been me, I would have been there. Like that's the way I think, but like they're forgotten now. I, I can't remember a place. Yeah, though. yeah. Like, yeah. Well, I suppose that's a good thing as well. That is a good thing. Yeah. That's something that's stuck in that broke yeah. your heart. Yeah. No, like, geez, like if you're if you're like that over every every no you got you'd you'd never be an actor. Yeah, yeah. Would you be into going and writing a movie now? In the next few years, or I'd love to do something more. like that, but I'd love to like kind of hone my craft a bit more, yeah, just to do it properly. Yeah. yeah, so so many times you might think, Oh, yeah, I'm deadly, I, I have a great idea, yeah, and you might be able to do something fantastic, 
but then you see other movies coming out and they're just get by people who are just as passionate as you yeah. are and you're like oh my god what did you make yeah. like yeah. they're getting slander and like it's my idea like that it's just because yeah. it's in my head it sounds great yeah <laughs> like, kind of like so it's that kind of like it's that like process of create creativity it's like i have a great idea i can't remember what it is fully but it's basically seven steps or something yeah. it's like this idea is great i'm not too sure this idea is terrible yeah i'm terrible yeah. this idea is terrible this is not too bad yeah. this is actually great yeah. yeah that's the process that you're meant to go through. yeah um i'm just constantly stuck in the center yeah and i'm like nah fuck it, <laughs> yeah, yeah but no, i have i have no pads full of stuff i have books full of ideas and all that i have all these things in my head i'd love to do but um just about push myself past that to yeah. the next step and getting it done exactly at least you have kind of you have it all written down what you want to do and yeah. you have the ideas and it, it will come yeah i have an idea for really over the top city comedy sketch thing and that's what i was thinking what there I, mean. I was just gonna say would you be into doing a comedy sketch thing like i, I, I think you i have the idea yeah. like i'm kind of combining into two different forms like tv is tv's kind of going on the way out a little it bit it is yeah everyone's on their phone watching stuff yeah and entertainment on your phone is completely condensed down to 30 mm. seconds to 45 seconds yeah isn't it because of just reels and other yeah. videos so if you're gonna do something i mean idea is wait when the idea i told the lads some of the ideas and like you should just put them online i'm like i don't want to put them online mm. no because they're just they just come and go and you're kind of yeah that. yeah yeah i'd rather have them all condensed in this little thing and it becomes no one has its own thing yeah yeah, yeah. that's and good it's just this 15 minute episodes of non-related non-connected stories like it's, mm. it's a little sketch go little yeah. sketch go sketch show and the idea of being it's just your flicking show station is each episode is just someone's channel hopping and just stop and you yeah. watch yeah. and you just hop again yeah and it's just a matter of getting six of them with really good solid ideas yeah and um, i've been three of them so far i've been working on for a long time or not so brilliant and if you do need any supporting actresses yeah. we're available we're, we're you say that now and we're no, we're you say that now and i'll send you the script and you go oh my no, god we what won't. have we done I'll well, give it a go. That sounds like a challenge, actually. Yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> there you go. That's a challenge. No. Yeah, you've, um, you've and do you know what? I don't know how you feel about it. Uh, I know we have to wrap up soon, but see, critics hate them. Right, I'm going to tell you why. Do you ever see when a movie comes out or something, right? Honestly, it wraps me head. When a movie comes out <laughs> and somebody's like, everybody's looking, say The Little Mermaid, right? Everybody's looking forward to The Little Mermaid coming out. There's all this showness about it, right? And then people are like, no, but the critics are saying it's shy. I'm yeah. like, and then you go see the movie and you're like, no, I thought it was brilliant. You're like, yeah. why does anybody listen to critics? Yeah. Like, in my, honestly, in my head, I'm like, why does... Because it, it always depends on the person watching the bleed movie I, or listening to the song or watching the dance or whatever it is. It I think critics are just person. bullies for, oh, for actors. I actually actors. hate it. Well, criticism is like, it's like construct, constructive criticism. There's a difference. Yeah. But I'm talking about someone that just goes and watches a play or watches... Their whole interpretation of that is their interpretation of it. And you're putting that out into a newspaper or online or and then all of a sudden it's do you hear that shy? Yeah. Because this one critic said it's shy. Yeah. Like or the same even with restaurants with food. I'm sure and people all. say the and same like, about the podcast and they're probably like, Did you hear talk to the town podcast? It's fucking shy. But probably yeah, and yeah, that, that, could, yeah. that could that could tear people. Okay, we're a bit shy. <laughs> <laughs> um but that would like if somebody said to me like oh, if you hear that podcast it's shy I, I'd be saying, all right, I want to listen to that one yeah. and listen to something else. Yeah. And that's damaging. Yeah, like, it is. I, mean? I just, yeah, it's I just two ways to say that. Just there, I think. It's, like, it's the same with, like, the way Farm I know about it. It's the same with, like, with video games. You have um, outlets, critis mm. crit criticism, and then there's user yeah. scores. Yeah. And then sometimes you get way to yeah. People who are paid to review might yeah. give it a low number because it's them, but then you get people who, the hundreds and thousands who like yeah. the game, yeah. or like that's that thing, and then that's why I like. I just think it's a lot of crap. Want it. Like you woke up and what decided you want to be a critic. It's like deciding you want to be a clamper. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> anyway, that's all I want to say in it. Because I'm getting a little heated. But I don't like critics oh, or geez. clampers. She's a rowdy one today. Oh. <laughs> I don't like critics, clampers, and we're going to be supporting actresses. Yes, yes, we are. In yeah. Lewis's yeah. We have to start my right. and Q's now. That's it. Yeah. We're not going to course anymore on no. the podcast. Yeah, right. For Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> No, we won't. Go. Okay, then no more cursing. Bitch. <laughs> um, Lewis, I'm I'm finished with me questions. What would you What would you say to anybody looking to start up in what you do? Not not in in um. 
acting as such, like, because I always thought that you went and you just went for a role, and I didn't know that these theatres were, like, mm. you theatres were a thing. So for somebody who wants to get into what you do in kind of getting the kids together and all, what, what would you say to them? Um, first, want to do it. Yeah. Don't go, I want to just do this because it's... Uh, a job. Yeah. Um, one, you want to make a lot of money. Um, anything I get goes straight back into the youth theatre. Yeah. Um, just to pay rent and cover insurance yeah. and first aid and all that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and if you really are passionate about doing it, um, get the training. Yeah. Once you get the train, you're going to meet all the people who can guide you where you need to go. Yeah. And you'll make so many connections with others in the field. Yeah. Um, but it is very important that they actually care about young yeah. people yeah. and not just the paycheck yeah. or at the end yeah, of the day. You want to have a passion for this and you want to be able to like yeah. hone your craft and do the thing. Yeah. Um, youth here in Ireland, uh, they do the day before the train. Yeah. Um, look on the website and see when the next thing is going on. Yeah. And you can sign up to that and uh, yeah, get your little qualification and then go out on your way. If it's what you really want to do. It's a lot of work um, to get it up and running. It took about a year to get swords off the ground. Yeah. Um, but if you really want to do it, then by the time you get to that stage of opening it, you'll know yourself you're committed to do it. Yeah. And then you gotta get the point in the door. And then you gotta do all the advertising. And you gotta yeah. do all that stuff. Yeah. We started, oh, we went around a whole lot of swords. And I think in one day, I think I'd done about 48 K steps in one day. Kind of, I think I handed out about 1,500 flowers in my hand. Oh going, my God, fair play to Yeah, I was, yeah, I was never again. <laughs> <laughs> that was just one I'm day. Done. That was just one day. Um, and I think from all that, I think I got three people from the flowers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't do paper flowers anymore. One, it's just too much money. Yeah. It's also, a waste. Yeah, it's a waste. Not people just throwing them in the Yeah, bed. environmental Honestly. friendly. Even permission slips are all done online now through mm. secure, yeah, good man. secure form that I, I have. I think now as well, everybody just looks at social media. That's the deal. Yeah. 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 They, they want to see online. something they yeah. search on social media. Do that. <coughs> yeah. No need to do that. I might do one or two posters and then I'll throw them up in hmm. online locations, but gone are the days of flyers and all that. Do everything yeah. online. Best yeah. off doing it. Save your money. Brilliant. Well then, I think that's a wrap then, guys. Yeah. It is. Lewis, thanks so much for coming in. Thank you. Thanks for having me. As always. And make sure that you give me and Tracy a shout when you have our, our uh, sketch script. show ready. Your script ready, right? Yeah, cool. yeah. Wait. And uh, oh, yeah, it's now? been a pleasure <laughs> again. Thank you so much. Thank you as well to Stephen Simpson for letting us see us cut some bruises in Ballymun. And yeah. that's a wrap. That's a wrap. Lewis, so thank you. So <laughs> oh.